Hi everyone, welcome to Bisaya 24-7, your official Cebuano English tutorial on the web. As we know, the Christian world is commemorating the season of Lent, which highlights the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am not a priest or an authority on these teachings, but I am simply here to share to you something that I found inspiring, and I hope this will impact you in the same profound ways they impacted my Christian faith. Whatever faith you have, I am inviting you to take the time to pause and listen to these biblical readings. Together, let us learn some of the more important teachings in the Holy Bible and reflect on the lessons as they apply to our lives. A good portion of the session will also be used for translating a Cebuano Visayan text into its English language equivalent. So this will be some sort of a double-edged sword that hopefully will cut through our understanding whether we are beginners or further learners of the Cebuano and Visayan language. It is my hope that you embrace this next few minutes with an open heart and an open mind as we journey along these holy texts taken from the Holy Bible. I invite everyone to come forth, listen, reflect, and give this tutorial a chance to settle into today's meditations as I will be sharing two great stories that focus on God's forgiveness and deliverance. Feel free to share as well these teachings to others. May this video tutorial find you healthy, hopeful, and inspired. Juan Capitulo 8, Versicolo 1, Ngadto sa 11. Ang babay nga hisakpan nga nanapaw. Ang babay, babay is woman. Hisakpan means um, being caught in the act. And nanapaw, nanapaw means um, committing adultery. Unya ang tanan na mauli apan ni Adto si Jesus sa bungtod sa mga olibo. Sayo sa pagkabuntag, mibalik siya sa templo. Ni alirong kaniya ang mga tao, ug milingkod siya, ug nanudlo kanila. Ang mga magtutudlo sa balaod, ug ang mga pariseyo, nagdalag usa sa kababay, nga hisakpan nga nanapaw og siya gipaatubang nila sa tanan Mingon sila kang Hesus magtutudlo kining babayhana hisakpan nga nanapaw Sa atong balaod nagsugo si Moises 
nga ang nagbuhat sa ingon kinahanglang batuon hangtod mamatay. Karon, unsa may imong ikasulti. Gisulti nila kini aron pagbitik kaniya ug sa ingon ikasumbong nila siya. Apan nitikubo si Jesus ug misulat sa yuta ginamit ang iyang tudlo. So let me translate these verses in Cebuano and Visayan into the English translation. First verse, Unya ang tanan na mauli apan ni Addo si Jesus sa bungtod sa mga olibo. So Unya translates to, And then, ang tanan, means all, tanan is all, or everyone, na mauli, na mauli, translates to uh, went home, or left. Apan, but, miado si Jesus, miado um, means he went. So he he goes to a certain direction. Mi adto si Jesus, Jesus, sa buntod, buntod is a mountain. So sa buntod sa mga olibo, olibo is just the olive. So this is the equivalent of the Mount Olive. So this says, and then everyone left, but Jesus went to Mount Olive. Sayo sa pagkabuntag. Sayo means early. Pagkabuntag is the morning after. Mibalik siya sa templo. Mibalik um, translates to came back. Siya refers to him, which is Jesus. It's a pronoun. Sa templo. Templo is the temple. Mi alirong. Kaniya. Kaniya again is a pronoun that refers to Jesus. Mi alirong uh, means um, they were like circling, circling around. Who are circling around? Um, ang mga tao. So it's the people or the crowd in you know in the village. So they were circling around him. Ug and milingkod siya. Ug nanudlo kanila. Milingkod. Um, sat down. Siya refers to Jesus again. Ug and nanudlo kanila. So, tudlo is to teach, nanudlo is um, doing, you know, some teachings. Kanila, this refers to the crowd, to them. Ang mga magtutudlo sa balaod, so ang mga, this is mga, signifies a plural form. So, there is more than one, magtutudlo. Magtutudlo is a teacher. So, the teachers sa balaod. Balaod is the law. O, and, ang mga pariseyo. Again, mga here translates the phrase into its plural form. Ang mga pariseyo, that means the Pharisees. Nagdala Og So nagdala is nagdala Og Usa kababay Nagdala means they brought Usa one Kababay So it's a woman Babay is female Or a woman Nga hisakpan Hisakpan is um, Catching 
or um, catching somebody doing something, you know, being caught red-handed. Na nanapaw. Nanapaw is um, adultery. Ug siya gipaatubang nila satanan. Siya here refers to the woman gipaatubang nila. Nila refers to the teachers. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees. So them. So they made her gipa atubang. Atubang is the face. Who? Tanan. So everyone or it's the crowd. So they brought her a woman who was caught um, committing adultery and they made her face the crowd. Miingon sila kang Jesus. Miingon, um, they spoke or they said something too. So sila refers to the teachers and the Pharisees. Them. Kang Jesus. So who did they speak to? They speak to Jesus. Magtutudlo. Kiling babayhana, hisakpan nga nanapaw. So magtutudlo here um, is addressing Jesus as the teacher or rabbi. So rabbi, kini, this, babayhana, so it's specific, it's a, it's a woman and this specific woman. Hisakpan, so was caught. Nga nanapaw was caught um, committing adultery. Sa atong balaod, so sa atong balaod, atong balaod, that's our law. So in our law, nagsugo, sugo is command. So nagsugo si Moses. That means Moses had commanded nga ang nagbuhat sa ingon that ang nagbuhat buhat is to act or do that whoever does sa ingon ingon is the same or what has been uh, specifically mentioned earlier kinahanglan so kinahanglan is a necessity it's a requirement it's necessary Batuon. Bato is rock or pebble or stones. So batuon is the act of throwing stones or stoning. Hangtod until mamatay. So until that person dies. Karon. Now. Unsa. What? Unsa may imong ikasulti. So, imo here refers to Jesus. So, they were addressing him. And, ikasulti. Sulti is, uh, you reply. Sulti is to talk. So, it's, they were asking him, Now, what can you say about this? Gisulti nila kini aron pagbitik kaniya ug sa ingon ikasumbong nila siya. Gisulti nila. So they said this. Kini. So whatever was said. They said whatever was said aron. So for the purpose of pagbitik Bitik is to set a trap. Kaniya. Kaniya here refers to Jesus. So it's a pronoun. Him. So they said this to him to set up a trap for him. Og and saingon. You know, by doing so. Ika sumbong. Sumbong is to report. 
and by doing so they can report him upon but mitikubo si Jesus so Jesus stooped stooped on the ground ug misulat and he wrote sa yuta yuta is ground dinamit so using ang iyang tudlo using his finger Ug samtang nagbarug sila didto nga nanghutana mituyhad si Jesus ug miingon kanila Bisag kinsa kaninyo nga wala makasala maoy paunaha pagbato kaniya Unya mitikubo siya pag-usab ug misulat sa yuta Sa pagkadungog nila sa gisulti ni Jesus nagiyahay sila og pamahawa Una ang mga tigbulang Nahibilin si Jesus o ang babay nga nagbarog gihapon dito. Si Jesus mituyhad o miingon kaniya. Babay, hain naman sila. Wala ba'y nagpabilin aron pagsilot kanimo? Wala, sir, siya mitubag. Kun mao ka na, Si Jesus maingon kaniya. Dili usab ako, musilot kanimo. Lakaw na ug ayaw na pagpakasala. Now let's do the translation. Verse 7 to 11. Ug samtang nagbarog sila. Nagbarog is um, standing up. So while they were, samtang is while, while they were standing, sila. So they did to there. Nga nangutana. Asking. So while they were standing there, asking. Mitui had so mitui had translates to stretch out or it's like um stood up so who stood up it's Jesus he stretched out you know remember he was um stooped on the ground he stretched out and mingon kanila mingon so he spoke to whom? Kanila. So, to them. And this uh, refers to the teachers of the law and the Pharisees who brought the woman. So, he addressed them, including the crowd. Bisag kinsa kaninyo. So, bisag kinsa. Kinsa is um, whomever. Kaninyo. Among you. Nga wala makasala. Who? Wala makasala. Sala is sin. Wala means has not sin. Maoy, you know, therefore will be the one. Paunaha. So una is first. So make him be the first. To what? Pagbato. Bato is again stone. So pagbato is the act of stoning. Kaniya. Kaniya here refers to the woman who was accused. So while they were standing there asking, Jesus stretched out and spoke to them whoever among you who 
has not sinned. Make him cast the first stone. Unya, and then, mitikubo siya pag-usab ug misulat sa yuta. And then, he stooped on the ground again, and he wrote on the ground. Yuta is dirt or ground. Sa pagkadungog. So, sa pagkadungog translates to, dungog is hear. Sa pagkadungog. So, as soon as they hear. Sa gisulti ni Jesus, what Jesus said, nag-iyahay sila og pamahawa. Iyahay um, translates to like one after another. So it's not, it's, it's a separate act. So everyone, um, namahawa, pahawa is to leave. So each one started to leave. Nag-iyahay, that it means um, one after another or one by one. Una ang mga tigulang. Tigulang means the older ones or the old people or the elders. Una, so that means the first to leave uh, were the older people. Nahibilin si Jesus. So Jesus was left ug ang babay and the woman nga nagbarog nagbarog means um standing gihapon gihapon translates to still didto didto means there so nahibilin si Jesus so Jesus was left and the woman who was still standing there Si Jesus mituyhad ug miingon kaniya. So Jesus stood up or stretched out and spoke to her. Babay. So meaning woman. Hain naman sila. Hain is a question which means, you know, where? Hain na. So, where are they already? You know, na. Where are they already? Sila. Sila. That's them. You know, the people who came. Wala ba'y nagpabilin? So, nagpabilin is, bilin, nagpabilin is to remain. But when you say, wala, nagpabilin meaning to say nobody remained so the question was hasn't anyone remained or stayed aron to or so that pagsilot pagsilot silot is to punish or to condemn so has anyone stayed to condemn kanimo that is you wala sir so no sir she mitubag siya mitubag so she answered kun mao kana so kun mao kana this translates to if that is the case or it also would mean therefore you know in that case si Jesus miingon kaniya Jesus told her or spoke to her kaniya he refers to the woman dili usab so dili uh, signifies 
negation, so not. Dili ako, ako that means I. Musilot, silot is to punish or condemn. So I will not condemn, usab. So that usab there means also. So he said, I am also not going to condemn you. Dili usab ako musilot kanimo. Lakaw na. So lakaw. Lakaw is to walk or to go or to leave. Lakaw na. So go. Go already. Ug. And ayaw. So ayaw is a um, suggestion not to. So ayaw na pagpakasala. Pagpakasala. So, sala is sin. Pagpakasala is the act of committing sin. So, this last line says, Therefore, or in that case, Jesus said to her, I will not also condemn you. Go and don't sin again. So here's a reference of um, the Old Testament of the basis of what was being talked about in the story that we just read. This is from Leviticus 20, verse 10 of the King James Version. And this is from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. This is also from the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 17 verse 7 This is from Romans 2 verse 1 from the New Testament. And another verse from Romans 2. This is from 22 to 23. Again, from the New Testament. So this is from the New Testament, Luke 9, verse 56. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. This is from Luke 5, verses 12 to 14.
And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. So this shows an act of mercy. So the story that was just read above emphasizes how people are so quick to judge others, how people are so quick to point fingers at others, how people are so quick to condemn other beings. So let us do these reflections and ask ourselves, how quick am I to pass judgment to others, condemning others of their guilt? The next question is, do I pass the same judgment to myself when I commit wrongs, or do I simply find an excuse for the wrongs that I have done? three this verses and this is a shining example of how slow we should be in terms of you know judging other people I'm going to read this to you verse 4 they say unto him master this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So I have highlighted these two instances wherein Jesus did the same thing. He stooped down and with his finger he wrote on the ground. So this only implies 
how he was not interested at all in judging or condemning even after hearing those people who have accused the woman of the sin that she has committed. But if we ask ourselves, do we even delay judgment? Do we even pause before we cast judgment against other people? Do we even take a few minutes to listen or to weigh in um, before even, you know, casting judgment to others? And the sad thing is, as human beings, we always do the opposite. We are so quick at judging other people. We are so quick at pointing fingers towards other people's guilt or sins. Sometimes even if we are not even asked, we take the opportunity to condemn others even if we are not even asked for our opinion we volunteer you know to criticize others to pass judgment towards other people because it's so easy it's so easy to accuse it's always easy to look on the shortcomings and the failures of other people but here in this example we should always reflect on this reflect on how we as Christians should follow the examples that Jesus has set for all of us. Now let's talk about God's forgiveness. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, 
went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So this is how beautiful God's mercy and forgiveness is. And this is a very important lesson. Repentance is a crucial element in reconciliation. As clearly stated in this verse, And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So this can also be said, you are forgiven, go and change your ways. Ug si Jesus, misulti nga to kaniya, dili usab ako musilot kanimo, lakaw na, ug ayaw na pagpakasala. So forgiveness is completed when the offender takes up the burden of changing his or her ways and not repeating the same offense. Now let us read this very beautiful story of Susanna and this is featured in Daniel chapter 13. Unfortunately, this story is not as popular because if you look at the Bible, the Bible that we have now only covers up to Daniel 12. Uh, the reason being is that these are uh, short stories exist now only in Greek and other translations but probably were first composed in Hebrew or Aramaic. They were never part of the Hebrew Aramaic book of Daniel or of the Hebrew Bible. They are excluded from the Protestant canon of scripture but the catholic church has always included them among the inspired writings they existed in the septuagint which was used as its bible by the early church and this was referenced from the usccb.org website so it's from the united states conference of catholic bishops now this story uh, Fitch, uh, talks about a very God-fearing and obedient and faithful woman named Susanna. Um, she was accused, but because of her faith and obedience in God, God heard her prayers and she was delivered from her enemies. So let's read the story. Uh, read along with me.
In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her parents were righteous and had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich and he had a garden near his house. The Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Lawlessness has come out of Babylon, that is, from the elders, who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the elders saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They perverted their thinking. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. Though both were enamored of her, they did not tell each other their trouble. For they were ashamed to reveal their lustful desire to have her. Day by day, they watched eagerly for her. One day, they said to each other, Let us be off for home. It is time for the noon meal. So they went their separate ways. But both turned back and arrived at the same spot. When they asked each other the reason, they admitted their lust, and then they agreed to look for an occasion when they could find her alone. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered as usual with two maids only, wanting to bathe in the garden for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden gates while I bathe. They did as she said. They shut the garden gates and left by the side gate to fetch what she had ordered unaware that the elders were hidden inside. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and ran to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut. No one can see us and we want you. So give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was here with you and that is why you sent your maids away. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me not to do it and to fall into your power than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna screamed, and the two old men also shouted at her, as one of them ran to open the garden gates. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations of the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. 
When the people came to her husband, walking the next day, the two wicked old men also came, full of lawless intent to put Susanna to death. Before the people they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Helkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. Susanna, very delicate and beautiful, was veiled, but those transgressors of the law ordered that she be exposed, so as to sate themselves with her beauty. All her companions and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two old men rose up and laid their hands on her head. As she wept, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The old man said, As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two servant girls, shut the garden gates, and sent the servant girls away. A young man, who was hidden there, came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this lawlessness, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the gates and ran off. Then we seized this one and asked who the young man was. But she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, Eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things for which these men have condemned me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel. And he cried aloud, I am innocent of this woman's blood. All the people turned and asked him, What are you saying? He stood in their midst and said, Are you such fools, you Israelites, to condemn a daughter of Israel without investigation? and without clear evidence. Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come, sit with us, and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from one another, and I will examine them. After they were separated from each other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age! 
Now have your past sins come to term. Passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, the innocent and the just, you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Your fine lie has cost you your head, said Daniel. For the angel of God has already received the sentence from God and shall split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, Daniel said to him, Beauty has seduced you, lust has perverted your heart. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your lawlessness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, said Daniel. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to destroy you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two old men, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of bearing false witness. They condemned them to the faith they had planned for their neighbor. In accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. Hilkiah and his wife praised God for their daughter Susanna, with Joachim, her husband, and all her relatives, because she was found innocent of any shameful deed. And from that day onward, Daniel was greatly esteemed by the people. So this ends the story, and indeed it shows the deliverance from the enemies of Susanna because she was obedient and she was faithful and when her accusers condemned her as she prayed and entrusted everything to God God heard her prayers uh, just a footnote of the story uh, the contrast between the mastic tree which is small and the majestic oak emphasizes the contradiction between the statements of the two elders. Also, in the Greek text, there is a play on words between the names of these two trees and the mortal punishment decreed by Daniel for the elders. The mastic tree, Shinon, sounds like the verb to split. Shisai. The oak tree, Prinon, suggests a play on posai, which means to saw. And um, this information was also provided by the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. So you can find this information in the usccb.org website.
So now we have come to the last part of this um, session and we are going to highlight just the lessons, the very important lessons that we learned from these readings and reflections. So all that we have read and learned in this uh, tutorial boils down to two things. The first one is um, God's answer for those who are accused but with repentance. The answer is always forgiveness and mercy. And for those who are accused but they have obedience and faith and they have the holy fear of the Lord God's answer is always deliverance from the enemies so finally I would like to say um, may this uh, session uh, help us in our reflections in observance of the Holy Week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Daghang salamat. Maayong adlaw kanatong tanan.